Welcome, folks, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, and I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others by bringing craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Today's guest is Nigel Merrick, a photography marketing coach based now in Memphis, Tennessee. Nigel runs the popular website Prime Focus Lab, and he produces the Photography Marketing Masters podcast. Nigel has just published a new book, a wedding and portrait photographers called From Zero to Booked. I highly recommend you pick it up. I'm also very pleased to invite Nigel to this conversation because I've followed him for the longest time and it's been it's been a, a real pleasure to get to know him through his writing, through his blog, through his podcast, and now hopefully through this little interview. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, Seshu. And uh, thanks for the great introduction. I, I that's the first time anyone, I think, has called me an industry leader. I hope that that's a good thing. <laughs> it, well, I think so. I think so. I listen. I, I you know, I I came to know about you. I don't know how. Perhaps it was through Facebook, as as it's always the case these days. Uh, it may have been somebody forwarding me some information, uh, maybe to your older uh, website, mm -hmm. and then you know, just sort of tacking on and reading your post. And I have to tell you. Every single time I read anything that comes from you, I read it from top to bottom, all the way through. Uh, and it's because of yeah. the way it's written. Uh, and you're very good. You're a very good storyteller, no doubt. But it's also uh, very focused. I mean, the point is, there is a point. <laughs> that is the beauty of your <laughs> writing. It's like there yeah. is a point to yeah. every single thing you do. So I'm, I'm really excited about this new book that you've just launched. Um, but before we talk about that, I think most people who've who've started to listen to this conversation probably have said, "Hey, wait a minute! Memphis, Tennessee doesn't have a southern drawl. What's up with that?" So, talk <laughs> to us a little bit about your journey as a photographer uh, and mm -hmm. how you you came to live in Memphis, Tennessee. Well, uh, I was born in a little place called Warsaw in the United Kingdom near Birmingham. Uh, long time ago not even going to say the date because it was a very long time ago last century sometime and um i actually threw my first camera away into the ocean that's uh <laughs> i guess <laughs> which you you probably know since you've read the book there is a little bit of uh, a story about that uh so i wasn't really born with the camera in my hand i had no intentions to become a photographer until probably well into my late 20s uh, when i took up underwater photography as a sort of an ancillary hobby to support my scuba diving activities uh, and I was lucky enough to leave the UK well I shouldn't say lucky enough to leave the UK um, but I, <laughs> lucky enough to end up in, in Bermuda and, and I worked for a bank there as a project manager and uh, programmer analyst and that type of thing in the IT department uh, scuba diving on the weekends and days off and that sort of thing taking underwater photographs and, uh, and a friend of mine, who was an Egyptian guy, ran the local dive center, so we would go out with them a lot. And he kept saying, oh, these photographs are awesome. You really should do this for a living, which I think a lot of people, you know, get that. You know, the wedding and portrait photographers get that a lot from their friends. Hey, you're so great. These photographs are fantastic. You should go and try and earn money from your camera and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, listen, dude, I, you know, I've got a good job here at the bank. They pay me well. I love what I do. Yeah, but you're so good at this. And then Y2K happened. And, uh, you know, that was a really bad time for, for any, any programmers out there, who, especially those who worked in banks. So we thought about it. My girlfriend and I at the time, we thought about it and said, you know what, let's do this. And so we, we gave up our jobs and we set up a underwater photography center in Egypt, in, in the Red Sea, in Sharm El Sheikh, and uh, really threw ourselves in at the deep end quite literally. But, you know, I have to say that the first time I jumped in the water with a camera out there, it was like shedding a skin. You know, I finally felt that I had, was doing something meaningful, something that meant something to me personally. I loved, you know, I loved my job as a programmer. I was really good at it. But sitting behind that desk all day, tapping away on the keyboard, just writing code, is can get kind of a bit soul-destroying after so many years, you know. So... Um, so I really kind of fell in love with that 
we spent a couple of years out there, uh, ended up in the Cayman Islands, did some work out there, went our separate ways. I went back to England and then um, eventually came here, uh, ended up in, in Memphis, Tennessee, the land of barbecue and Elvis, of course. Of course. And uh, love it here. Uh, my wife, Kathy, is from Memphis, so uh, this seems like the natural place to be. And, uh, and I set up a wedding and portrait business. Did that uh, from 2004 until about 2012. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, I had really found this, this love of marketing. Really, you know, I, I didn't like it at first. In fact, I had a, like many photographers, I hated sales. Hated it. Right. And uh, I would probably have preferred to poke my own eyes out than actually become a salesperson. Uh, but when I learned more about it and what it really is about, then I actually grew to like it. And certainly marketing, particularly. Uh, I guess that, that inner geek just wouldn't die. And he was <laughs> still there. Even after all the years, like swimming around and splashing around with the sharks and stuff in the Red Sea, he was still there. And and so I would be tinkering around on my website a lot and doing SEO and, and all that type of thing. And then I really got into copywriting and marketing and just kind of fell in love with that. Other people started asking me for help. And uh, and that really led me to where I am now, which is this is what I do full time. I, I you know, I'm no longer a working photographer. Uh, in all honesty, I was nowhere near as good at it as all the people that I teach. So I feel like I'm in the best place for me. Fantastic. You know, I under, I understand the photography business and how it works. Right. Uh, uh, you know, and and I consider it my goal to help people who are actually better than me at taking photographs to go out and serve their clients to the best of, of their ability. Fantastic. That's great. Uh, you know, one of the things I do is I keep poking around your website, and uh, uh, I, I'm surprised that I I hadn't hadn't seen this particular mm -hmm. page on your website, but uh, you describe what you call the phone call that almost killed my photography business. <laughs> yes. And it's a story that uh, rings rather true, to be honest with you. Uh, and I bet it rings true to a lot of photographers out there. Uh, mm -hmm. And the way you've written it, um, as I have indicated in my introduction to, uh, or the, the, the sort of the, <laughs> the, the first part of our conversation is about how lucidly you write. Uh, and, and it speaks to the... Um, the realities that photographers face these days, you know, and mm -hmm. um, and I'm always I'm always curious to know. So I, I get that you're not a photographer full time anymore, but you work with photographers full time. Right. Um, are these stories from some of your clients, and you just sort of put them together? Is that how <laughs> oh, it <yes>. works? <laughs> I mean, the the page really could have been the phone calls that almost killed my photography business because sure, it wasn't yeah. just one single phone call like yeah. that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for anyone who's interested, they can go on the Prime Focus Lab website and, and find that particular post. But, you know, essentially it was a phone call that somebody called me up, said, hey, you know, I'm interested in having some portraits made. How much do you charge? And, of course, I made the one big mistake and actually told them what my prices were. And, of course, as soon as I did that, it was, well, okay, I will uh, talk about it with my husband or whatever and I call you back. No, 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 wait, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go. And, of course, <laughs> they're gone. Yes. And, uh, you know, so we'd arranged that I would call her back in a week to see and, uh, and I right. did. And the answer was, oh, no, no, it's okay. We already found somebody right. uh, cheaper. Right. Um, and, and not only that, there's actually, there was actually one instance where I lost a wedding because I wasn't expensive enough. And that was okay. that, that, that really was a, a puzzle. I mean, I was amazed and I couldn't understand why. And it was a friend of mine, mm -hmm. uh, which made it even worse, uh, an artist friend. Her daughter was getting married and she'd asked me to you know, give her some information about photographing a wedding. I did and never heard back and a few months later I said what, what happened about this wedding oh well, yeah we found a really great guy in Nashville and uh, he's going to come down and do it and I said well if you don't mind me asking you know how much how much is he charging for this and it was three times what I had originally quoted her oh my word wow and that's one of those times when 
you think to yourself, well, if these people are prepared to pay three times more money than what I was asking for, then clearly it's not the price that's causing the issue here. It's it's a matter of connection and and making a compelling case, if you like, for being the right phot photographer for them. Now, chances are that you know I may not have been the right photographer for them at that time, and the other guy was a better fit. You know that that is. Yeah, probably the case. However, you know, I think most photographers make the mistake of letting all of their potential clients go because they're letting them try to self-qualify and just by looking at the photographs and without actually making a, any kind of compelling case through their website, through the stories they're telling. You know, we, we all know that the you know, photographic storytellers and the whole idea that I'm going to capture the story of your wedding day or the story of your family or the, the story of your kids through my camera and and share those with you. And, of course, those stories mean things to the people that they were created for. The people, you know, the people that paid for them understand the stories. They were there. They, they're part of the story. They're the characters. Right. And so there's nothing in there that is kind of alien to them or unknown. Now, you might think, well, you know, these are great photographs. I'll just put them up on my website, put them in the gallery, put them in a slideshow. People are going to look at them and, and love them. But that doesn't happen because people who weren't there, just they don't know the story. You know, there may be great photographs, technically great, emotionally great, whatever, but they can't really get the story out, especially what happened outside the frame, what happened before, during, after, blah, blah, blah. Uh, without the photographer telling that story in actual words. So this is something that you and I have talked about before we started recording. In fact, when, when we started planning this little interview, right. <laughs> we talked about how important words are. And it is something that photographers who are dead set on creating photographs, I mean, obviously photographers must create quality photographs. There's no doubt mm -hmm. about that. Right. Uh, but there is this reluctance for photog by photographers to create 300 to 500 words sort of describing what's going on in the photographs. So that it gives the, the, you know, their, their future clients a sense <laughs> of what they were thinking, what their approach is, what their what the story was, what the backstory was about these photographs. Yeah. Uh, why is that? Why is there that reluctance? I think it's a combination of several things. One is fear, uh, because as soon as somebody who is not a writer who or who doesn't consider themselves to be a writer comes up against the need to have to write something say for a website they immediately go into this idea of oh my god now i've got to make this sound good i've got to make it sound professional and they they get these sort of horror flashbacks like ptsd going back to when they were at school you know and their school teachers are trying to hammer all of these writing rules into their head a little bit like the old pink floyd thing you know we don't need no education stuff you know right. <laughs> but you know it for a lot of people those uh, memories are actually quite painful you know, they you know they feel like they didn't do well at school in English. That, that writing was just something that they had to do to do their homework. Uh, their teacher got mad at them if they missed out, you know, a certain piece of punctuation or they got the grammar slightly wrong or whatever. Um, and uh, they had to have X amount of words. You you know, I mean, I've my stepkids when when they were at school, they would come home with a homework assignment. I've got to write. Uh, I have to write five three hundred words on whatever topic it happened to be or I have to write five paragraphs uh, and each paragraph has to have five sentences in it and that's just t way too rigid you know people don't read blogs and websites the same way they read a book or a newspaper or a f special report or something like that you know it, writing for the blog is very much a case of being conversational and you know, when I when I started writing my original marketing blog, which was at Xenolog, um, 
you know, I, I thought at the time I was okay. I thought I was doing a little right job at it. And literally a few weeks ago, I was going through that site, taking out all of the old content and moving what I could to the Prime Focus Lab. Huh. And I was horrified at some of the stuff that I had written there. It was awful. It was it was some of the worst, stiff, most boring, you know, hackneyed rubbish that I think I've ever seen. And and, and most of it went in the trash can. Well, we do tend to be self-critical, obviously, right? I mean, yeah. as as photographers, I know I am as a photographer. I know I'm very critical of my photography. You know, uh, mm-hmm. the stuff that I did. Ten years ago, right. uh, in my opinion, right now sucks. You know, but I'm, I <laughs> well, know I'm I, I'm all oh, I'm, I'm that much better now, though. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm, I've, I've traveled, I've I've gone through this journey of learning and making mistakes, and I think this is the kind of thing that I wish uh, photographers would learn from. Is that you know, yes, put one sentence with the next and the next and then the next, and start writing, uh, and you know. A year from now, your writing is going to be much better. Yeah. Uh, so don't practice, feel, yeah. don't feel, it, it is a matter of practice, right? Um, mm-hmm. So I'm going to link to that wonderful uh, landing page. I mean, that's what it is. It's a landing page where you are inviting Thanks. people to uh, mm-hmm. uh, better understand how to work with clients. And it's a, it's a really good, lucid, straight piece of writing that I think everybody should read. Uh, but let's talk about your new book, uh, which uh, sure. is called From uh, Zero to Booked. Uh, talk to us about the genesis of this project of writing. What is it? 80,000 words? What was, what was that you just said the other day? <laughs> it's like 71,000 71, words. 71,000 words. Uh, so, hopefully, there's 71,000 words of something that makes sense to people. Sure, sure. Um, absolutely. I, but, started, I started to read it, and I loved it. I think I think it should be something that... Everybody should read. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, and not just read, but put into practice what you've what you're teaching them, which is, right, which is I right. think, really the point of any kind of a book. Like, you don't take a book and read it uh, like a like a fiction book. You know, there's nothing to do with a fiction book. You just read mm-hmm. it for enjoyment's sake. You don't. Yeah. There's no there's yeah. no action involved in, in it afterwards, right? Uh, hopefully mm-hmm. not. But uh, with with something like for your book, uh, you are calling photographers to action uh, you know and it's action that is going to elevate their businesses you know in a very tangible way so talk to us a little bit about the book sure well it started out actually as something completely different to how it turned out which is usually the case in these types of things the initial idea for the book was to give photographers some insights in how to um how to identify who their ideal clients were that was that was the main idea at the beginning uh, I had just done a workshop on that topic at the time when I started uh, putting the book together and it seemed like a good thing to try to put into a book form but then uh, as, as these things tend to do it kind of grew and grew and grew and I got to the point where I thought you know this book is is fine uh, for people who want to find out who their ideal clients are and get a better handle on it that's a huge you know part of it because there's a lot more to that than just thinking well they they're moms with kids who you know they earn a hundred thousand dollars a year and live in a four bedroom house with two cars you know in this zip code that's not uh, that's not what i call an ideal client uh, although it's, it's part of the way there so i thought well what what can i do here to expand on this because what do they do after that? And, the, and I'm very big on teaching photographers the process of lead generation. And so the idea then became, okay, so we start with basically who you are as a photographer, how that defines the type of business that you're going to create for people, the experience that you're going to offer your clients, you know, what, what are they going to get out of it, what your business model is, who your ideal clients are, and then, how do you actually reach those people? How do you engage with them on a, on a website? How do you turn them into uh, leads that you can then have a conversation with and then turn those people into clients through a booking process, which is you know the typical kind of process that people use uh, for booking weddings and portraits. Uh, so that's kind of... In a nutshell, if you like, that's kind of what it what it's all about. It's essentially a, a 
a marketing system with uh, a booking system at the end of it. Fantastic. Uh, and this isn't just your your first book. This is the, this is your, no. um, what I'm reading. Your third book. Uh, you've written a book called Selling Fine Art Photography, mm -hmm. and you've co-authored a book called Starting Your Career as a Freelance Photographer as well. Right. Um, now, all of these books are available on Amazon, so I'll have links to each one of them. Um, what is your end goal for this book? What would you like for? What would you like to see after a photographer reads this book? What is their action? Next action. Well, my take on this is that you can't read your way to su to success, and unfortunately, I think. Uh, a lot of people are, really fall into that category of information hunting. They become addicted to the search for information. We've all done it. I mean, I'm just as guilty as the next person. You know, I'll just go out there and I'll dig up information left and right. But I, I can't remember who it was that said it was it was um, one of the uh, U.S. vice presidents. I think he said that. In most cases, you already ha you can already make the decision that you need to make because you already have 80% of the information. The other 20% isn't going to make that much of a difference. And I really wish I could remember who it was that said that, but still. Uh, but the thing is, is that you know, if somebody presents you with a with a complete system, um, you could read you could read about it, you can internalize it, conceptualize it, do whatever you want. But unless you start to try to put it into practice and you actually do something, you're not going to know if it's going to work for you. Uh, and, and of course, you have to do it in the right steps, the right order. Uh, you can't really miss anything out because if you do, then you, you risk a break in the system. It's like you know trying to build a car engine and then forgetting to put the, you know, the fuel injection system in or the fan belt or something. Eventually, it's going to break. <laughs> sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, um, one last question, and perhaps the most difficult one. Uh, there's a uh, there's a, a real glut of photo marketing <laughs> coaches in this business. There are. Yeah, you know, you just, turn around and yeah, you know, yeah. a photographer decides, okay, I want to throw a workshop or a seminar or a webinar or something mm -hmm. or the other together over right. the weekend, and uh, I'm going to teach. They say, uh, what makes you the best photography marketing coach? right now well i think i'd like to rephrase the question just a little bit because i I, th I think to label somebody as the best of anything is probably not quite right i, I don't consider myself to be the best photography marketing coach out there if there is such a thing i don't even know how you would measure uh the best it's uh so i don't really consider myself to be the best now what what i would say is if people read what i have to to offer on the website if they pick up the book and they and they read the book and it resonates with them and the and the stories that i weave around the marketing concepts mean something to them and and they can understand that you know i'm coming from a place of uh, genuinely trying to help them uh, then that might make me the best person for them to choose as a coach, but it doesn't necessarily make me the best out there. You know, there's, I don't think there's any such like ninja warrior for, uh, you know, for coaches, you know, <laughs> maybe we should, maybe I should go and try the ninja warrior course and see if I can get at the top and get that million dollars of it. Uh, but no, I mean, it, it, it's like, there's no such thing as the best wedding photographer, in any given city, uh, and yet uh, you know people try to do you know search. Uh, sorry, they try to do SEO for themselves to get ranked for the best wedding photographer in Chicago or whatever. Um, and it really, the best best how in what sense? You're, you're only you you can be the best for for a particular client. That's right. And you could be the worst for somebody else. So they, it, it's all relative. Now, uh, you know, there is a lot of information out there. There are a lot of people writing blogs about marketing. There's a lot of people doing web webinars and seminars and, and so on. I think it's up to the individual photographer to find the person that they feel like they really can trust and that they resonate with and whose message makes sense to them. 
personally. You know, I, I mean, I, I can't possibly work with every photographer out there. It would drive me crazy. I, 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 <laughs> there's too many of them. <laughs> I mean, true. you know, my LinkedIn group alone has 26,000 photographers in it. And you may not realize this, but you were actually my very first member. That's how we actually came to know each other. Wow. You were the very first person to join my LinkedIn group way back in 2011 when it started. I did not know that. Wow. Yeah. What an honor. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nigel, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you've written a book called From Zero to Booked, and it's for photographers to take their marketing game uh, up a level or two um, through a system. Really, you're teaching them to follow a system uh, that works and has worked with other photographers that you teach. Um, and it's an honor to talk to you. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us today. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed being here. Take care.